can say unto thee, his people, that there surely is a foe in thy midst this day, saith the Lord. And yea, it shall rise higher and higher upon thee as thou dost sit here today in my presence and in my glory. And yea, by the time you walk out of this place, you shall be moved up above into a higher realm of me, saith the Lord. Yea, ye shall find many things that have bothered thee even this week to be under thy feet, to be subdued and to be conquered this day, saith the Lord. For I shall deposit within thy spirit an abundance of faith and knowledge and thou shalt decree a thing today and it shall be established unto thee for I the Lord am giving thee a tongue of power and a tongue of authority and thou shalt open thy mouth this day in my presence and yea fire shall come out of thy mouth and shall devour all of that that is stood before thee for the there is an overcoming anointing in thy midst this day, saith the Lord. Yea, it is a strong anointing. Yea, it is a powerful anointing. Yea, it is an authoritative anointing that shall rise up within thee. Thou shalt not back down. Thou shalt not fear. Thou shalt not tremble under the load. But thou shalt speak with new tongues and with new might and with new authority and things shall run from the midst of thee because it shall be break forth as the morning rising of the sun and great rays and beams of light shall go forth from thy earth and shall enlighten and shall enhance and shall clarify saith the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to speak with tongues of fire. Amen. You're going to speak with tongues of fire. You sit in this glory today and just soak it into your being. Let it get in there and infiltrate past your old flesh and your old natural mind. Hallelujah. And he maketh his angels. Oh, glory to God. Ministering spirits and his ministers, a flame of fire. Can you say praise the Lord? A fire goes before them, devouring everything that is before them. Glory be to God. But that means there's going to be a garden and Eden. Read your Bibles. When that fire gets through burning, there is left a delight of God and Eden of his presence. A garden of his glory. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord.
you, for these are small things for me to handle, saith the Lord. Just little things, saith the Spirit of God. Cast it on me. Throw it on me. Roll it on me. This day, saith the Spirit of God, thou hast no obligation under that burden, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord.
Well, you, that's how you learn through trial and error. <laughs> that's how we learn from natural, ain't it? Through trial and error. A lot of times, you know, that's the way children are. That's how they learn. You try to tell them something and they won't listen to you, they have to find out on their own. You know? When they're two years old, you tell them, don't touch nothing, don't touch that stove, don't touch, touch it. Because then you told them not to. By the time they get to be six or eight years old, you say, touch that stove, it's hot, touch it. Well, they already learned that, so they won't touch it. You try to reverse it on them. But they won't touch it then, you know, because they've already learned it. So that's how the trial and error goes. But we count it all joy. You've got to be happy knowing you're trying, knowing this and the trying of your faith work is patience. Oh, yeah, patience comes with it. See, we need patience. So it's worth it. Testing and trial. All of our tests and trials brings in patience. And we need patience. The next verse says, But let patience have her perfect work. That's right. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That you may be perfect and, and entire means complete. Yeah. That you might be complete, I'm full, you know. So if you want to be complete, you want to be perfect, and you gotta go through trials and testing. Right. Yeah. Jesus said it. He said he was tempted in all points like we were yet found without sin. Yeah. But he, we didn't know he could be the Savior when he, he never had sin nature. We were born with Adam, was born first right. man. The first Adam was born with sin nature. Not when you not knew about that, you know, you complain about people sinning and all that, well, that's their nature. Yeah. You know, until they get changed, you really can't condemn them, you know, or talk bad about them, because that's wrong there. Right. And you've got to look past the, <clears throat> all the, problems they have and all the complications you know and all their bad works and you got to look at the soul of the person because yeah. every man was created you know yeah. equal yeah. the soul part was created equal yeah. the spirit was a, the spirit is always there the spirit don't need no saving but the soul will need saving we have that's what salvation is for mm -hmm. and uh, and there's always be a the spirit always wants the soul to be saved he never gives up on the spirit. The spirit never gives up on the soul. Right. He's always wooing the soul, you know. Because yeah. one day, it's going to be a day of completion when the soul will be completely saved. Oh, yeah. See, we have been saved, we're being saved, we shall be saved. Yeah. That's when we'll be complete. Yeah. Complete in Him. It's when our spirit and soul have become one. Oh, yeah. That's the whole end of the journey when your soul and spirit become one. Then you've reached your fullness, you know. Fullness in Christ. Nothing to do with the body. Now we will get a new body. The Bible talks about a glorified body, but uh, there's nothing natural in heaven. There's nothing uh, spirit. Everything spiritual up there. You can't take nothing carnal to heaven with you. You don't know. Carnal man is not even subject to the will of God. See, there's no subject. He's not subject to him. He's not, he won't receive it. And the Bible says the preaching of the cross to uh, unsaved or to the world is foolishness. They don't even understand it, you know, how a man could die on the cross and you'd be saved and, and shed his blood and that's for your remission of your sins. Yeah. But Jesus, but the Bible says the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. Yeah. So it took some time through the plan of salvation, went on down through the Old Testament, and all kinds of prophecy was prophesied, you know, that there would be a lamb come, you know, lived before for shears, before it would be dumb, you know, and open out his mouth. All that was talking about Jesus. Matter of fact, the whole Old Testament, every, in each one of those books, uh, proclaims the name of Jesus. Every book does, you know. It's, his name is in every book. And so you just have to uh, read through it and with the eye of the Spirit, and, you know, and be ready and uh, see it. See, that Old Testament is just the New Testament concealed. And the uh, New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. See? That whole word, the spirit, you know, and you can get a natural uh, understanding out of it because there's no life in that. You got to get a spiritual understanding to have life. So, so when we get, when we had to come to Earth, you know, that was it was a, that was part of our journey, coming down to Earth, you know. He put us down here so we could understand Him in a greater way. As I said, we understand Him now as Savior. We understand he was healer, yeah, all things like that. See, back in the spirit, we didn't know him as healer. But we had no sickness then. We were completely well. There's nothing wrong in heaven. Everything's perfect in the spirit realm. We say heaven, but I just call it spirit realm. You know, about the same thing. 
and all his mercy, all his grace, and all that. We wouldn't know that then. We had to come to earth to find that all out, didn't we? Even the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? The love of God, you know. While we were yet sinners, he loved us. See? Yeah. While we were without, without strength. We had no strength of our own. We had no, nothing we could do about it. God stepped in, you know, and he took on. Because he, he loved us so much. We find him as he, he was our, also our king. The king of kings and lord of lords. That, that let us know right away that we can be kings. Because he's king over kings. So we've got to have some kings under him. And we find out that he's a provider. And uh, like that, we said that he came to earth as a lamb. He had to, what he had to do, he was slain before the foundation of the world. But it hadn't been revealed. It had been prophesied in the Old Testament and all. But he had to do it here. He had to come here and walk in the shoe leather and, and perform it. He had to unveil himself, you know. He had to die here on the earth. Like that, you know. We had to see it, you know. We had to, it had to be manifested. Yeah. You know. That's what we had to do. We're down here. We're spirit people down here, you know, in the earth. And we're here to, for a purpose and for a reason. To fulfill the will of the Father. Yeah. Jesus said, He said, Lo, I come, lo, in the volume of the book is written of me. I come to do thy will. Yes. See, it's all written all through the Old Testament, and He come in to do the will of the Father. Yeah. He didn't do none of His own will, He just did whatever the Father did. Oh, yeah. So and that's what we're doing. We're down here trying to do the will of the Father. The only way we can do that, well, first we've got to be born again, we know that. We've got to be quickened. We got and we got to have an understanding. Yeah. All this thing is through trials and testing, like I said, our testings. Yeah. You know, he said it's for the joy that's set before us. The same joy set before Jesus, didn't he? Said the joy was set before him. He endured the cross. Yeah. Yeah. What joy was it? The joy of his glorious church, yeah. um, without having a spot or wrinkle. Yeah. The glory of his church, the glory of his people, and the glory of uh, all the saints. And all that, and that's what set before him. He was a, he was going to be the firstborn among many brethren. Hey, he thought about man. all his brethren, you know. He was on the cross, and and he had to fulfill the will of the Father. I mean, the human part of him might have had to suffer, and he had to cry out, you know. The human part might have said, let's not go through with this. Actually, Gordon, we, he had the power to stop it. Yeah. As the songwriter wrote, he could have called 10,000 angels, right. Right? but he died alone, you know. But uh, but it was all prophesied, and even the people in those days didn't know who he was. A lot of them today don't know who he is, but they didn't know that he was a king of glory. But they never would have crucified him. See, it was withheld from them. God held that away from him. You think you think it bad about they wouldn't receive him? All the Pharisees and Sadducees and all, but there was a reason. God had their eyes closed. He didn't want them to see him. You know, he just wanted to see so much. Now, all they saw was the law and things like that, and they couldn't, they didn't understand the love of God. They couldn't see it, you know, until after the, resur after the crucifixion and the resurrection. Then we understand the love of God. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten yeah, Son. Yeah, yeah. He didn't come to condemn the world, but He came to save the world. Yeah. So He was, and, and that was the joy that was set before Him. He was, he was going to be the Savior of the world. Of course, it was great joy in Him to fulfill the will of the Father, too. That was his. That was his will. That was his mission here on earth. Yeah. And he didn't. He didn't last. He didn't stay too long either. Thirty-three and a half years. That's right. It wasn't very long, Philip. Yeah. But he went about doing good everywhere he went. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, boy, like that, things like that. So uh, there was no sin found in him. That's where. That's why we can refer to him as Savior. Yeah. And eventually we'll become saviors. When there's no sin found in us, we yeah. become complete. You know. Yeah. The Bible talks about the saviors on Mount on, on Zion. Gonna judge the Mount of Esau. See, we're gonna we're gonna judge, but we can't judge at all until we get the mind of Christ. We get the same spirit He has. If the same spirit has got to be in us and raise Jesus from the dead, but we can't do that. We can't be saviors. Otherwise, we'll look at people's actions and start judging them. So we can't do that, you know. So we gotta have the mind of Christ. So that's good. and that takes a lot of commitment and a lot of obedience, you know. The first man, Adam, he had a, he performed the act of disobedience. Yes. Technically, he didn't he disobeyed God, but he did it intentionally. 
you know. Adam, uh, like we said, uh, when the serpent came, he didn't come to Adam, he came to Eve. Right. Right, because Eve was a soul, and and she could be tempted, tested. And he tempted her, you know. And she looked at the tree and saw that it was good, and she saw the goodness of it, you know, and she went, went along with it, what the, what the Satan, what the serpent said. Yeah. But then Jesus, you think Jesus, uh, God wasn't caught a uh, surprise or nothing, because he planned it all. Right. If you if you preach that, in most places that God planned the fall, they probably he wouldn't. That'd be hard to take. <laughs> I think mean, I mean, Adam planned it all. Right. He didn't plan it. God already planned it. There was a verse in there that says God created a destroyer. See, God creates both good and evil. And that's hard to believe. I thought God was all good. Well, there's a when He gets ready to correct you or something, He has to use things like that. He uses different things, you know, to correct you and bring you into. But you, all those things He comes against you with or something, it's always for your good. It's for an expected end. Right. Only thing testing the trial comes it's hard on the flesh, but it ain't hard on the spirit, man. Right. Just hard on the flesh. All that testing and trying, but uh, it's all for your good. Yeah. Everything's for your good, for the best outcome. He's got your hand looking. He got your hand inside. Yeah. Because yeah. he knows he's he's, he's both the uh, beginning and the end. Yeah. Most people can receive Jesus as Alpha, but they think well, well Omega. You know, they believe God started everything, got everything done, and all. Well, when it comes to ending everything, they got all these opinions how it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, God's going to divide these from these, cheat from the goat, you know, and he's going to destroy this and do this and that, you know. But God's not the destroyer. He's tempted no man or tempted our own things. Yeah. Right. But he's also the finisher. If, if he owns everything and all belongs to him in the beginning, it's all going to belong to him in the end. Yeah. So it ain't going to belong to nobody else. There no, there ain't, ain't no devil or nothing like that. It can... Is king is any higher power than God. Yeah. God said he searched everywhere, all through heaven and earth and all throughout eternity, and he couldn't find no other God. Right. He couldn't find one, you know. That's if anybody right. could find one, he could have. Yeah. He could have found one, so yeah. ain't no need much trying to find one. That's right. See, he, he's a better searcher than we are. Yeah. That's right. Right. But we have to seek after him with all our hearts. See? Yeah. That's what we have to do, you know. Then go find him. Most people ain't searching that thing with all their hearts. Just they just want a like a girlfriend relationship. Yeah. That's about it. You know, they don't want to get committed. They don't want to be totally obedient. Mm -hmm. They want a few. They want to keep a few things back for themselves. Well, yeah. But yeah, it's, this is called total commitment. Yeah. That's what Jesus did on the cross. That was total commitment. Yeah. You know, the flesh, the flesh man had to die. He had to have a body, otherwise he could die. The spirit couldn't die, yeah. but the body could die. But uh, <clears throat> spirit just rose up again. That's right. So your spirit never died. That's right. And your soul don't ever die. Right. But your natural man, you know, it goes back to where it came from, but it's just a, a hole anyway, you know, just a carcass. So we can't spend too much time. So the things of life, gotta, and the things of earth has to get dim and lose its value after a while in our lives. Right. See, if earthly things overcomes heavenly things, then we're not, <clears throat> we're not ready for the kingdom. Yeah. We're not ready to, we're not, God is incompleted. We're that lost sheep shall out there wandering. Yeah. You know, the parable of the lost sheep. Right. 99 in the fold and there's still one out there. Yeah. Well, that's just humanity. That's just part of humanity. All that is, the part of humanity is still out there. And, and the Bible says he'll, the, the shepherd will search for him until he finds him. Mm -hmm. Notice that word until. And until, that's a time word. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just until. Until it's all finished, you know, it ain't finished right now. But when it gets all finished, then we'll then we'll all become a God. We'll come all in the all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have to people that what people have to do they have to become dissatisfied with what they got. You know, some people you know, will never move on until they get dissatisfied. Right. You know, get the belly full of something, or they're sitting in their comfort zone and they just won't move. Yeah. So. You have to be discomfort. Yeah. Only way to make you move. Fine, fine example of that is the eagle. You know, it says, look unto the eagle, you know. Consider the ways of the eagle in the air. One of the things is when they're babies. When they're little babies, they're all nestled in the nest, you know. Everything is soft and warm in there. And they ain't got no problems at all. And all of a sudden, it comes a time when uh, they got to grow up. They can't stay babies all their life. 
You're going to grow up. So what's yeah. the mother eagle do? She takes all the all the fluffy stuff off that nest, all the soft right. stuff, and, and there's the thorns right under there. What's hiding under that nice nest? Thorns. Who could believe that? Why would the bird be able to put thorns in his nest, you know? Yeah. But there was a reason, you know? Right. That's the only thing going to get those uh, eagles, little baby eagles moving is discomfort. Yeah. They can't wow. sit on them thorns. So they hop on the edge of the nest, you know, right. say, and, and next thing you know, the mama eagle comes along and knocks them off the nest. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they go flying through the air, flopping, you know, and, yeah. and if you, they're going to struggle, you know, and the mother eagle has to come down and pick them up before they hit the ground every now and then. But after a few times, all of a sudden, they get it, all of a sudden that thing comes alive inside of them, yeah. that they can fly too, or they yeah. can soar. Yeah. Eagles soar, really, you know, fly, you know. So that's, that's the way we are. That's why we got to consider the ways of the eagle, you know, how it soars. Yeah. See, that's the way this, that's the way the spirit goes. That's the way an overcomer goes. Yeah. What to do? The eagle overcomes. Overcomes all the current and everything, was able to use it, mount up, you know. So that's what technically that's what God is looking for in this life is overcomers. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't looking for nobody to fly away or disappear or nothing or just die out. <laughs> but we gotta overcome. Yeah. Yes, we are. And everybody overcomes, they got something to give us. New names, you know. He's going to make us a temple in the house of God. All those things in the Revelation tells about the church that overcomes. Yeah. So that's our main thing in this life is overcoming. Yeah. And Bible, Jesus said, I've already overcome, you know. He's our example. I've still overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Three things we have to overcome, more or less. Yeah. Our greatest enemy is ourself. Sure it is. Sure it is, you know. So we overcome ourselves, you know. Ready to receive this, rule his own spirit, he that takes a city. Right. You know, if you can rule your own spirit, then you're all right. You know, things don't bother you. Yeah. People can pull out in front of you in the traffic, or, or you know, or do yeah. some things, crazy things, and it won't even phase you too much. Yeah. You'll be able to control it. Yeah. The old man might kick out and say, "Blow the horn," but then, uh, yeah. then the new man, you know, kick in and say, "That's all right, let him go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let it pass," you know. Overlook that one, you know. Yeah. But we have to overlook a few things, you know. We can't get focused. Yeah. All our focus is important, you know. Focus on God. Focus on the things of the Lord. You know. Don't focus on things around us. Right. You know. Talk about the monkeys and dragons, you know. Yeah. Right. Monkeys. Yeah. And dragons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know the monkeys are right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't look at them, you know. Yeah. They just they just run around us. We don't look at them. We don't give them no strength. Right. That's the only thing, you know, if you don't look at something, you don't give it no power. That's, right. yeah. That's why they, people are always talk about the devil, only power he gets what you give him. Technically, yeah. you know, he's already been defeated, you know. He's just there to tempt you, you know. To be like Jesus says, he's uh, Satan's outside, well, he's got nothing in me, Jesus said. Yeah. And there's no way he come tempt me. Yeah. Yeah. But he's already been tempted and tested. And he tried and he passed it. Right. Yeah. So... Let's go over here and read a verse in uh, I'm not going to read it again. Oh yeah, I want to get this verse in in Isaiah 63, first chapter. Oh, 62. All right. That was the same page though. It says, of course we've heard this priest here, for Zion's sake, we've heard about Zion, well I not hold my peace. That's right. See, God ain't going to hold his peace. He's going to be restless. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. So God's, God's going to, you think God's resting, but he ain't going to rest until everything comes into him, you see. What he's saying there, he's restless until for Zion, he's doing it for our sake. We're Zion. Where the, where the people of Zion, you know, where the Jerusalem, really, where the city coming down, yes. where a city, you know, sent on a hill. For so for for Zion's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, God ain't just gonna sit around and do nothing. Yeah. Right. He's gonna reach out and he's gonna he's gonna keep searching for us, he's gonna seek for us, you know, he's gonna keep changing us, he's gonna keep working on us. Yeah. Every man works out his own salvation. That's right. With fear and trembling. <laughs> that word works it just means being, being obedience. Every man be, becomes obedient. It's required to be found faithful. Yes. And under much is given, much is required. Yeah. You know? You know, all these people, it's law required. They got they, they come short on any end of the stick. 
because they know a lot, and, but they but they don't want to be required as much. Yeah. They don't want no responsibility. Yeah, and like Esau, he, he sold his birthday. He didn't want the responsibility. Yeah. You know, that's what that is. Your birthright, your responsibility. Yeah. You got to own up to it. You know. Yeah. Right. So. God ain't going to rest until all Zion is brought in, until all the people, until it becomes all in all, before he can rest. Of course, we know where he's resting. He rests in man. Yeah. We know that, don't we? I will not rest until. There's that word until. See? There's an until. There's a time coming that righteousness therefore go forth as brightness. Everything will be shiny bright, you see. And when that when that time comes, until. Until then. But when it comes, it will be bright and it shines. Therefore you go forth in brightness and the salvation therefore as a lamp that burneth. It's going to be a bright lamp burning. Everything, the knowledge, like you're saying, the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover the earth. Yeah. And He plans on that and it will happen yeah. in the fullness of time. Yeah. God's got a time, you know. He's got a time. He, our time is not His time, but God is, is busy with us and He's always at work. He's doing something. Yeah. We're not thinking. We think nothing's happening, but something's happening. We just can't see it. It's behind the scenes, you know. It's hidden from us. Because everything comes line upon line, precept upon precept. We can't handle God all at one time. We just can handle part of it, you know. Where it's, it's, it's like uh, seeing through a glass darkly. Because we just can understand this so much. Otherwise, we'll get we'll get puffed up maybe or something. Even when I heard about Saul, uh, Paul, he had to have a... Uh, he could get buffed up, so he had to have a, a, a uh, had to be buffeted, you know. He had to, God uh, allowed, allowed, he says that he get buffed up, you know. He had to have a thorn in the flesh. Here we go. He had to have something. Uh, maybe because he comes with so much, he was so heavenly minded that he might not be, you know, can't handle him in the flesh. Kind of. He said he'd, he'd rather go on, but it's more necessary for him, for us, that he stay here and teach us teach us things, you know, but he's ready to go on. He's ready to get out of here, you know. He, 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 he understood enough of God and he know where he's going and everything. And He says, I think I just need to leave on out of this place, you know. I'm going to be like Enoch. I'm gonna be, I just want to be translated, taken out of here. Yeah. Leave the earth behind, you know. And some people get that way, you know, get real heavenly minded. Like they say, you're not, not, not if you're heavenly minded, not too much earth for good. <laughs> the old expression, you know, like that. But, but he said it was necessary he had to stay here. Right. But now Jesus left and he said it was necessary for him to go. Yeah. Yeah. It was expedient for me to go, he said. Yeah. I had to go I had to go now. Yeah. His time was up. He fulfilled the will of the Father. There wasn't nothing left for him to do. Yeah. Once once the cross came in, you know, that was it. He, he said it is finished. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he? That was just the finished work on the cross, all that was. Yeah. That wasn't all the creation finished. You know, there's a creation finish too, eh, of us. But his, his fulfillment on the cross was just was his, his life, his time in this life. He was finished. He, he, he done the will of God. He completed everything. Everything was complete. He done all he could do. Now, now he turned around to us, and now we do the works of God. He said, greater works than these ye shall do, because I go to the Father. And it just, just because he was one person, he couldn't be everywhere at one time. But now his spirit rules everywhere, and he can be in many places. He's all he's everywhere present, nowhere yeah, absent. Yeah. He's not absent anywhere. You know, yeah. he's only absent where people don't want him around. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you don't want him there, I mean, he, he's a perfect gentleman. He ain't gonna force himself on you. You know, not right away until your time comes. When your time comes for every man has his own own time. You know, and the man his own order. Your time comes to be born again and be saved, he'll start working on you. And he starts out gently. You don't get rough with you to start with. You know, he knows you're, he has to treat you like children. When we first get born again, God teaches us like children. See, it's a three, three way process. First, we're children, then we're sons, then we become fathers. Like that, you know. Uh, Isaiah said it. He said, unto us a child's born. Right. And that didn't stop there. Oh. Moved on again. He said, unto us a son is given. Yeah. Yeah. Son is given. And then also goes on and says, the government shall be upon his shoulders. That's his responsibility. Right. If he takes something on your shoulders, that's your responsibility. In this life, he says, 
He's responsible for the kingdom. See, he's responsible for the kingdom to come to you. Because we couldn't go to him or right. that, but he came to us. He came. That's why heaven came to earth. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get uh, heaven to earth. Now there might be somebody, uh, there are people around trying to get earth to heaven. Oh, you know, but the uh, Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it's already been done in heaven. So uh, it's important that uh, heaven don't uh, really need earth because earth, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. But uh, the Bible does talk about the days of heaven on earth in the Old Testament there. So there are days of heaven on earth. So you can have that and you can have every day of heaven on earth. The Bible says His mercies are new every morning. Isn't that something? God, you think God's going to run out of mercy? It can't be. He's going to, it's going to be new every morning. That's a lot of mercy. And that's to every individual too. That's what they say. Everybody gets up and testify at one time. Well, God can hear everybody all one time. Can you? <laughs> yeah, you can. You know, you just think about that. How many people are going to church this morning and all things like that. So, so God's a spirit. See, that's the first thing we learn. God's a spirit. And we must worship Him in spirit and truth. But also we got to know man is a spirit. And there's a person, uh, Job, that says man is a spirit. And inspiration from the Almighty giveth him understanding. understanding. All right? So man, man's man got to have understanding. Man's a spirit. That spirit don't need, don't need understanding because it's saved. So what needs understanding? Soul. Soul. Soul of you got to be. That's where your understanding comes in. That's your uh, thinking. Yeah. That's your mental part of you, you know, right. your soul, your conscience and all that, subconscious. All that comes under that category somewhere. So so the uh, soul is made up of the mind, the will, the emotions, and desires. That's all in there. And they all got to be turned over to God. Right. If they don't turn over to God, they turn over to uh, the flesh. And that's where the beast nature comes in. Sure it is. It's the beast nature of flesh. It's real easy, you know. At least... If you just turn yourself over to that, and we hear enough of that around, listen to the news, bad news and all that, we can hear enough of that on the TV. We don't even have to think about that. It's just happening all around us. That's just the way of the world. That's the way of the carnal man. All disobedience. Because the first act of where the fall was, we said, was Adam's disobedience. He disobeyed God. But... He saw his soul. One reason why he disobeyed God because Eve had disobeyed God. Right. And he looked at Eve and he loved Eve. That was his wife. He was married to her. And he didn't want her to stay alone, you know. He loved her so much that, he's, that he went ahead and disobeyed and became like her. Right. That's all he did in the beginning. He just became like Eve, you know. And then uh, God had to turn him out of the garden. Yeah. You know. Because he said, if you eat of this tree, you should surely die. Surely die. Surely die, see. And they did. They died spiritually. So right. the, the soul, the spirit of man just sunk down inside of him. Right down. That's sunk right down yeah. there and it's hidden. Right. Uh, the veil, you know, he couldn't see it. Now, and, and it had to be quickened. The only way it can become alive is the spirit has to talk to spirit. Yes. See, God talks to God. He yes. don't talk to your natural man. He talks to your spirit. Hallelujah. You know, he can't, he can't do nothing. Because the natural man, things of God to the natural man is foolishness. That's right. They don't understand that. They can't, you can't receive the thing of God, you know. The only thing you can do with Adam is crucify him. That's right. That's all yes. you can do with him. He has to be crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. And it's no longer he that lives that I live. Christ yes. lives in me. Yes. Right? He lives in me, you see. So that's how we become overcomers. We can allow God to live in us. Yes. He lives through us. And we want to do the will of God. Right. There's only one will. You can't have your will and God's no, will. You no, you got to join the God's will, you know. Your will becomes His will. Yes. John said, I must decrease Hallelujah. so that He can increase. Yeah. All right. He can't increase if you're still ruling yourself. That's right. So self has got to disappear. Yeah. You know? And that's where the battle is. Yeah. Battleground's in the mind, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Where, where we got the battle there going on, and, and it ain't going to cease until the flesh is gone. Yes. Yeah. Right. Jesus, uh, God said way back in the beginning, He said, the end of all flesh has come before me. There's going to be a time at the end of time when all flesh is going to be gone. You know? And Christ is going to become all in all. Hallelujah. So it's, it's all God's plan. Yeah. Not 
thought about that word GPS. You know, what could we put on there? Well, it's God's G's for God and P's for plan. I don't know to put on this. <laughs> God's plan secure or something. Yeah. <laughs> you, can put, you can put your own S on there, but that, that's the path. You know, you can you put on your GPS to how to find your way to get somewhere. Or right. you want to get in the spirit, kick on your GPS, you know, find out what God's plan is. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll be able to kick in there and go, you know. You'll be on your road, you're going to be on the road, you know. That'd be something, you know. And like I say, uh, God works on every man, and everyone's different. You know, everybody receives from the Spirit at different times, different things. Sometimes God calls your name. As in the Old Testament, He calls Samuel's name. And He also spoke to Saul in the New Testament. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecute without me? I don't think nobody else heard the voice, just he did. Right. No one heard was Saul. You know? So God may not speak to you exactly the same way you call your name, but the thing is, the effect will be the same. Yeah. That's what it is. When he comes to your heart, comes to your life, you'll have that same effect. You'll know who he is. Not only will you know who he is, who he is you'll find out who you are. Who you are. Who you are too, you know. And you don't forget. So because when we let the spirit world come to the earth, we forgot. Yes, we did. We forgot who we were. Yes, you know? we did. That's what we do. We got to remember. Because we know that. Because Job, when when uh, God spoke to Job, He says, uh, "Where were you? Where were you when the <clears throat> sons of when the uh, star morning stars sang together? You know, He forgot. I guess when the sons of God shouted for Job. He forgot. He forgot that. God had to remind him. God didn't forget it. Or He reminded him. He came alive then. So that's what it is when God starts reminding them of who you are and what you are. Your spirit comes alive. Yes, come when well, you get happy, alive. then you know life comes up in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's see. Everybody's in position up there. I think we'll call it a, a day and one the next service. God bless you. Praise the Lord.